All right, so in three, we're checking out the uh, Airblade Transformer mini frame. So this is uh, gonna be for the, those of you guys who wanna do your own custom four inch ultralight long range build. This is gonna be similar to like the Flywoo Explorer LR, the Chimera 4, the um, Kep RC Baby Crocodile. Uh, I think there's probably gonna be some more coming. Uh, so there's a lot of binding flies out in this category, but this is one uh, basically, if you want to build one uh, on your own with your own parts, and this is probably, I think, going to be the lightest of everything else that's out there, at least in the, way, with the way I put it together. So I'll try and explain some of the differences I put in my custom build here to get this weight down. So first of all, uh, this um, frame is uh, pretty light at 33 grams with all the hardware, and it is a unibody bottom plate, as you can see here. Unusual dead cat design here with some very skinny arms. So it's, it's got bracing here in the back. Typical dead cat in the front here with the arms pushed back behind the camera. And then the camera on this one does sit a little bit more forward than on some of the other ones, so the props don't show up in view on this one like some of the other ones. Um, this is uh, built with the uh, DJI, or so the, the Cadex Vista system here. So I got the Vista here in the back with the DJI camera here. So you can obviously use other cameras like the Nebula, etc. You can also build as an analog as well. Um, you don't have to obviously build it as DJI, but you have mounting points here for a 20 by 20 in the back or 16 by 16 VTX. For the flight control stack, you can do a uh, whoop style, which I, which I have here, or you can do a 16 by 16 or a 20 by 20. So this holds for pretty much everything. Uh, you have this 3D printer part here for the GPS and the antenna. You know, I'm using a custom antenna here. This is the uh, Flywoo Atomic antenna, left-hand polarized and extra long. I think it's 15 centimeters long. That's to get a very good signal and away from the frame and actually get pretty good range with this one. So this frame is pretty light because it's only a two and a half millimeter bottom plate and a two millimeter top plate. And there's no like separated arms with extra hardware screws and nuts and stuff like that to hold everything together. So the upside is that it's very light. The downside is if you crash really hard, you're probably going to break something. But uh, from my understanding uh, from Airblade is that they've done a lot of crash testing on this particular design and it's held up pretty well. And as long as you keep the all up weight fairly light, it should hold up pretty well in a lot of crashes. Uh, I did put some different motors on here than you'll probably find in some other um, and this is the RCN Power 1404 Plus series, and these are 3850 kV. So this is going to be, I think the ones from iFlight, the Chimera, comes in a higher kV version. I think that's either 3800 or 3850 kV, and I think 3850 kV does give you some a little more flexibility in terms of the battery options. And that's because I can do 2S, 3S, or 4S on this. So if you were in 4S on this, you're going to get a very um, you know, acrobatic, aggressive type of flying on this KV motor. Or you can go all the way down to 2S and get a really long flight time cruising around and carrying around a bigger battery. So um, well, I'll talk about the batteries here in a second, a whole bunch of them here. But let me just talk about the flight controller that I used here first, just to finish off the rest of this build. I decided to use an all-in-one this is the HackRC all-in-one flight controller board. And uh, as you can see, it's a whoop style. And where this USB port is on this particular board gets blocked by the Vista here. So in my opinion, a, a, a better design would be for have this uh, like back of the uh, part or this uh, bottom plate here sort of extended a little bit further back. So this Vista could be pushed back a little bit so that you can have access to USB ports. And a lot of these um, all-in-one boards with the USB port on um, that goes uh, horizontally like this, it's going to be in a position where it's going to be blocked, or you'll have to rotate the board or something like that. What I've done here instead is if I need access to the USB port, I just remove this nut on this side and the screw. So basically, I'm only using two screws and nuts here, so one on each side. I'm not using the forward and backward ones. And so if I remove those two screws and remove the or remove the nuts and take the screws out. I can slide the whole flight control board forward a little bit and that will give me access to the USB port. So uh, not uh, ideal, but um, after I've done the tuning and everything, I haven't, I haven't plugged in the uh, USB since and I've done all the pin changes and everything already. So I think we're good to go, but it's not too bad. 
Um, if you want to avoid this, obviously go 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 with the 20 by 20 stack, uh, 20 by 20 uh, flight controller board and EEC board. Yeah, so obviously you'll have two boards there instead of one, and that will probably add a little bit of weight. And then the uh, crossfire antenna here that I'm using is from uh, Video Aerial Systems. I forget the, what this is called. It's just a special kind of antenna. Um, I haven't had any range issues with this one. This is supposed to be full range, and I just zip tied it here to the bottom of the uh, side camera plates here. And this basically is in sort of a similar orientation to a, a Mortal T antenna that you normally put down here in the front. And this seems to be working out pretty fine, and this also has less weight as well. I think it's only like 1 or 1.1 grams, something like that. So just keep the overall weight of this build way, way down. All right, so this is what my build weighs, uh, no battery. And it's coming at 143 grams. So, um, yeah, it, you know, in terms of like getting it under 250, it should be, shouldn't be a problem. Now, if you decide to use a Naked GoPro, so this is the uh, Naked GoPro mount and the, the Beta FPV V2 case. And this actually has two screws here that goes like this right here. So if you have this on here, the weight goes from 143 to 174. And then uh, the, the, probably the most typical battery that I flew around is this one here, the 1000 milliamp hour Alline 3S. And uh, it's a low C battery, but you're just cruising around, it should be fine. And this one, all together with the GoPro, it's coming at 239 grams. And I was getting roughly seven to eight minutes flight in this setup here. But most of the time I wasn't flying with the GoPro. I was just flying it like this. And it's just, yeah, uh, 208 grams with this battery. Um, I would recommend removing these little balance lead protectors. I did that on the... Uh, the 1000. This is if you want to run 4S, is a 1000 milliamp hour 4S, also 60C. If you run this battery on 4S, you're going all of weights at 224 grams. And then there's also this other battery here, this GNB 1100 milliamp hour battery. So if you run that, it's uh, 208 grams. So this battery, this 1100 and this 1000, is pretty close in weight. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same weight, these two batteries. And then uh, if you want to go lithium ion, you can go with a or 2S or 3S or even 4S if you really want to. You probably need, uh, you might want to do a throttle limit on 4S, but uh, it's 3250. There's a whole bunch of lithium ion batteries out there. I don't think this one's even uh, made anymore. Uh, but if you want to, I'll, I'll actually list some other ones out there that you might want to try. But if you want to try this one all together, with a 2S, uh, 30, 32, 3250 milliamp hour lithium ion battery with no GoPro, it's coming in there, still under 250 grams at uh, 245 grams. So I actually um, did a little bit of uh, like flight testing with this one where to see how long it would fly around for, and I um, actually gave up because. Uh, I think after about 20 minutes, I was like, okay, I'm getting really tired and my fingers were hurting and bugs were crawling on my legs. And I was like, okay, I'm done. So uh, I think I went from about 4.1 volts to like 3.6 volts in 20 minutes. So something like this on 2S is going to give you a super long flight time. Uh, if you go, if you have even a bigger one, like a 33 or 35 or 4,000 milliamp hour 2S battery, you, you can probably break 30 minutes uh, easy on just 2S on this KV motor. So it's very light, very efficient. And of course, you know, if you carry a GoPro, a naked GoPro around, you know, you're adding additional weight. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna cut down your flight time and also your battery options. Anyway, so, um, you know, overall this build's pretty simple. Uh, you need motors, you know, motor wires, etc. It's, you know, just basically you solder it to the uh, all-in-one flight controller board and then you just uh, solder on the receiver got to solder up the Vista and the GPS. I did have to um, mount, uh, wire up the uh, Vista UART, or yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah, the UART, I guess, for Vista 2 soft serial, and then the GPS is a hard on a hard serial. I tried to do it the other way around. For whatever reason, the this MN180, or BN180, 
uh, GPS would not work on soft serial, so I had to swap it around. So I am on an uh, older version of Betaflight, I think 4.11 on this one, so that the uh, UART for Vista works. I'm not sure when that bug for Betaflight is going to get fixed. It's a similar problem that the uh, Explorer LR has uh, when you're dealing with uh, flight control boards that don't have enough hard UARTs for Vista plus the GPS. So that's the you know uh, one uh, one little downside about sort of going with these all-in-one boards with the, uh, the F411 chip. You only have two UARTs, and then you need to add a third UART for the either the Vista or the GPS. So that's the only thing that's the only really big downside on on these right now. Of course, I'm expecting that bug to be fixed uh, probably in, uh, hopefully pretty soon, and then yeah, I'll just update that update to 4.25, whatever one that comes out, to uh, swap that back around so that I could um, or actually put the uh, uh, Vista on the soft serial without having the OSD disappear on me. Anyway, so overall, I think this fly is absolutely great. Uh, this is one I've actually been flying around for a while now. I've uh, had this been built and done for several weeks. It's just that this frame is in high demand um, and it does tend to go out of stock quickly. I am releasing this video today because it just came back in stock. So if you are interested in doing your own four inch long range build, I would suggest uh, jumping on the frame right away um, and putting it to, and basically put your order in so that you can get it because uh, they don't usually carry a whole lot of these in stock uh, for very long. They tend to sell out pretty quickly. So that's why I'm putting out the video on the basically the day that the frame has been re-released back in stock because oftentimes uh, I release the video, I don't pay attention to what's in stock, and then people they go with that in stock, and then they complain, they forget, and then and then later on they don't actually end up uh, putting the uh, build together. So that's why I'm releasing this today because it should be in stock, and I would definitely recommend if you are interested in putting this together uh, to uh, hop on the uh, uh, the website and go ahead and put your order in so you can get that frame uh, delivered to you pretty quickly. So at some point I will do like a roundup video of some kind of all the four inch long range quads that I have. Got a whole bunch of them. I still have to do the baby crocodile video. I haven't done that one yet. So uh, not gonna not exactly sure when it's gonna be, but you know, in a nutshell, if you wanna know, uh, you know, the spoiler, uh, they all kind of fly pretty similarly. So I would kind of go for things like what things are important to you, like durability versus flight time. Um, you know, that kind of thing, or which company you prefer would be uh, better for you, like in terms of customer service, that kind of thing. Though I think those things are going to be more important than the actual performance, because uh, performance on something like this as a cruiser on a four inch, it's going to be more about flight time and overall weight and not so much about durability, but more like, you know, you know, which, which, you know, which ones, uh, which one costs less, um, you know, that kind of thing. I think those are the kind of things that are going to be probably more important in my opinion, but of course, what's important to you might be a little bit different. Anyway, I'll have that round of video some point soon, hopefully. And yeah, uh, here's some flight footage for you. I'll have links to additional flights down in the description because I've released quite a, bit, uh, quite a bit. So if you want to see how this flies on like other batteries, uh, those will be down in the description as well. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.